Hello there, welcome to the user interface guide, building your own customized UI from scratch. My name is Tusky, and today we will discuss streamlining your user interface, adding useful elements to your UI to present information to you as cleanly as possible. Now before we start, I just want to clarify that this guide will assume that you already have set up a basic user interface. If you haven't, and you wish to do so, then I suggest clicking the annotation on screen now, which will take you to my guide about setting up a customized user interface from scratch. Additionally, while these add-ons aren't 100% necessary, I find that they're very helpful in endgame content, such as raiding and PvP. Feel free to mix and match these add-ons as you desire. The UI is, after all, yours. There are a lot of add-ons out there, and it's more than possible that I've missed some. This guide isn't really aiming to cover class-specific add-ons, but if you feel that there's a really helpful add-on out there that I've missed, let me and others know in the comments. Now, this advanced guide will take you through several add-ons, and as before, you can download them from either Curse or WoW interface. You can also use the Curse client if you wish. Links to all three can be found in the description. The add-ons we will discuss are SCT Damage, Omni CC, OP, SCADA, Move Anything, and Tidy Plates. You can find links to these in the description. Let's start with SCT Damage. This is a plugin for scrolling combat text that allows you to turn your damage numbers into a frame in the add-on, displaying it on your interface as opposed to in the game world, above your enemy's head. While I find that this add-on is really helpful for presenting damage information in a much more reliable, readable way, it does take some getting used to. To open it, just type slash SCTD and find the SCTD options. This works similarly to scrolling combat text in terms of tweaking the options. In the damage events tab you can change what kind of damage is displayed, I prefer turning off the colour crit section but otherwise I like to leave it be. In the display tab you can find more options for customization, including an outgoing damage filter. I prefer having this set to about 5000 which you can do by just typing the number in the small box next to the slider, set it to whatever you wish. I also prefer to have the spell name and target name off. Be warned about disabling the only target. This can get very spammy very fast, especially if you're a multi-dotting class. The idea behind this add-on is to prevent information cleanly after all. Finally, the frame tab is pretty much identical to the scrolling combat text options. Here you can tweak the size, position, and animation style of the new SCT anchor. On my shaman, I like to have an angled vertical animation on the side of my screen. Moving on to Omni CC. This is a fairly simple add-on that places a number on your action bar cooldowns. Rather than having to watch a button carefully for the cooldown, you can easily see its cooldown numerically. I find that this add-on is pretty much ready to go as soon as it's installed, but you can type slash omnicc to fine-tune everything, from the size of the text and the cooldown's finish effect to its position and font. This is hyper-customizable, but if you just want to get the add-on and get going, then I suggest only tweaking the size of the font until you're happy with it. Onwards to OP. This is somewhat of a personal love of mine. This add-on allows you to create radial action bars around your cursor using button presses. It defaults to Alt-3, Alt-Q, Alt-R, Alt-F, Alt-Y, Alt-T, and the extra mouse buttons. However, it's very customizable to the point of being able to create your very own radial bars. Type slash OP to get into the options menu. There's a whole bunch of options here. Take a moment to look over everything and find anything you like the sound of. Personally, I suggest using the center rings at mouse to allow the radial bar to appear anywhere where your cursor is. After you've had a look here, go to ring bindings. Here you can set what key bindings are for your bars. I like to use Alt 1 to Alt 3 for some of my bars, and Alt Q and Alt R for important ones. However, remember that unbinding Alt 1 to Alt 3 will make it impossible to self cast a spell bound to the 1 to 3 keys, so keep that in mind. However, before we start binding, we want to think about what we want from the add-on. For me, it serves as a miscellaneous action bar, a profession bar, and more importantly, a target marker and world marker bar. The last two I have bound to the easy to reach Alt Q and Alt R buttons. Once you have them bound, I suggest unbinding everything else except for those two. Why? Because you can easily create your own custom radial bars. I find doing so better than just using the defaults. The only exception to this is the quest items ring, but I don't generally use my quest items like that. It can be helpful though, it's all up to you. Now, let's start making our custom rings. Go to Custom Rings, then hit New Ring. We'll start by making a profession bar. We'll call the ring Custom Professions. Hit Add Ring. I'm going to set the binding to Alt 3. Now, hit the Add button on the left. In this area, you can add new slices, buttons essentially. Just search for your professions. For me, it's Alchemy and Herbalism. But since there's not a Herbalism menu or really any buttons you need to press, I'm going to search for Alchemy instead. Double click the button to add it to the ring. If you have menus or buttons for your professions, like smelting for mining, prospect for jewel crafters, or mill for scribes, then make sure you add them. 
Once we've made that ring, let's make another, this time on my shaman. Why my shaman? Because OP looks into your bags and spellbook and searches for things that might be helpful, like flasks, potions and abilities. It's better to demonstrate this on a level 90. This ring is going to be for those buttons that you hit every now and then in a raid, but that might not need a key binding. Things like flasks, food, potions and tables for throwing at your terrible raiders. We'll call it custom raiding. I'm going to set it to Alt 1. Now, at this point you can type what you're after into the search bar, but you can also hit the items button to filter the search to only items. I'm going to add my Flask of the Warm Sun, my Crystal of Insanity, my Potion of the Jade Serpent, my Pandaren Treasure Noodle Cart, my Pandaren Treasure Noodle Soup, and my Flippable Table, because everyone needs a flippable table. Just as a note, although I don't personally use them, you can create rings for equipment sets, macros, pet abilities, summoning battle pets, mounts, or even other add-ons that are compatible with OP. Take your time to customise things. Finally, let's talk about the target marker and world marker bars. These are the main reason I use this add-on. In raids, they're really helpful for quickly marking ads or placing markers down in the world. It's much smoother than just using the rather clunky raid interface. This isn't going to help you if you're not in a raid leading position, but just remember that if you're a well-geared player, you might be made leader of a random group like an LFR or a 5-man, and maybe even a flex group. Let's move on to Scudder. A good alternative here is Recount, however, I just prefer Scudder. Set it up using slash Scudder config, or by finding it in the interface add-ons options menu. You can drag the Scudder window at any time with the left mouse button. From the general options to the threat menu, you can tweak anything to your liking. Personally, I like being able to see the damage and the healing, so I tend to leave everything save for the Windows menu alone. From the Windows menu, just make a new bar called Scatter 2. Drag the windows into position, then click on what you want it to display. Remember that you can use the middle mouse button to scroll down here. My first window will display healing, and the second will display damage done. A couple of notes. You can click on any player in Scudder to bring up a list of their damage and healing spells. You can also right click on it to go back a menu, be it from going from player specific spells to overall damage and healing done, and then back to selecting what is displayed. You can lock the windows by going to their specific menus and hitting lock. You can use the drop down menus to open up more customization for each window. I like tweaking the font and the bar size until I'm comfortable with them. You can also change the color if you disable coloring the class bars and the texture used by the bars. Finally, I like to change the background colour of the title bar and the window to black, and reducing the opacity to blend the windows into the UI. Once you're comfortable with your customization, we'll move on to Move Anything. Move Anything is a very potent add-on that lets you move anything. Hit Escape or open up the game menu and you'll see a new Move Anything button. Hit it and you'll get a new window. From here, you can move anything about the default UI. Click each section to open up a menu with each of the UI elements available to it. There's a whole ton of stuff here, so a few tips. The first button on the right hand side enables the window for dragging. Make sure you disable this once you're done moving it. The mover itself allows you to scale the UI element using the small boxes around it. The second button in the menu allows you to hide the UI element entirely. I'd not really suggest doing this. Finally, once you have edited the element in question, a reset button appears to the right of it. Hit it to completely reset its position and size to the default so you can experiment here. You can move absolutely everything here, but remember that this add-on can clash with others. For instance, moving the extra action button while also using Bartender can be a bit tricky and buggy, so I'd suggest avoiding it. When you get new add-ons that can move things, remember to check to see if it's already been moved by Move Anything. If it has, just reset its position and move it back using the specific add-on. Lastly, let's talk about Tidy Plates. This is a great replacement for the default Blizzard nameplates, which you can enable by default by hitting V or Shift V for friendly nameplates. Type slash Tidy Plates to open up its config. This first section is important for setting up how you want your plates to behave. Go to the primary spec theme and from your drop down menu select whichever you feel is best for your role. If you're a DPSer or a healer, you want to use the damage selection, and if you're a tank, use the tank selection. The different styles, graphite, grey, neon, etc, are how the nameplates are displayed. Just select whichever you want, check your nameplates in game, and then if you like it, continue on. Try to be near something like a training dummy to see enemy nameplates. I prefer using the grey style. You can pretty much ignore everything else on this screen. Now, let's move on to customization. Whichever option you picked, damage or tank, go to that menu on the left. We'll use tank for my protection paladin. In this menu, you can massively customize your nameplates. By default, 
it will have set them up so that if you have aggro, they will be smaller and blue. And if you do not, they will be larger and red. If you've got the damage option selected, it will just be the other way around. Take your time to go through the options here, remembering to scroll down to access more customization options. I like having show level on, changing the friendly nameplates in the headline view to be default so that they are shown, changing the normal scale under scale to about 130%, and the spotlight scale to about 170%. As you can see, there are a ton of options here. Take your time to look through them all, as Tidy Plates is a very hard-working add-on that will serve you very well. Once you have Tidy Plates set up, you're just about done. Your UI should now look fairly similar to how it did before, but be able to also present more information in a much cleaner way. Thank you for watching this guide. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any comments, suggestions or feedback, feel free to comment and rate the video. Additionally, I suggest subscribing to catch guides like these as soon as they come out. Thank you for watching and best of luck with your new UI and with your loot.